even though they've barely started to bud, the time to plant your tree is now. If you take a look around your neighborhood, you might see that some trees have really thrived over the years, while others have struggled to take root. It all comes down to the type of tree you plant, according to my next guest, my first guest. We need trees that are tolerant to our soil, our temperature, and our drought-like conditions. Sheridan Hansen is here to tell us the top trees to thrive in our Utah soil. It's great to see you. It's great to be back. It's spring. I am happy to be here. Sheridan brings a seasonal shift that we look forward to every year. So we're thrilled for more than one reason Yay, to see you. And I greeted you as I do many times when you come into our space, which is I'm so excited for this topic. I have no clue about this topic. I'm kind of naive in this, in this that's category. That's why we're here and that's why we're going to talk about it. So planting trees is something that is really important to our landscapes. And I know that water is a hot topic right now. Well, we have water to plant trees is kind of the thing on everyone's that mind. That was my question. Is it really worth trees are an investment? That I know. They are. They so are is expensive. it really worth worth it this year to invest in a tree not knowing what the waterscape will look yeah, like? Yeah, I absolutely still think it's okay to plant a tree or two because they do so many great things for our landscapes. They give us shade. They temper our temperatures and bring that temperature in our homes down. Um, they can also, you know, purify our air, uh, you know, help with pollution, things like that. So there's so many benefits to planting trees. And the investment for water to get that tree established, if we're just watering that tree, mm -hmm. is not going to be massive. So okay. it's a good thing. We can feel good about it. We're going to get into some specific tree varieties, but generally speaking, Sheridan, what should we look for in a good tree for our climate? So we want a tree that is well adapted to Utah conditions. So we have some funky soils here. Our our soils are heavy, they're clay, um, they're alkaline. So if you look on that pH scale, they're higher than seven, which is neutral. Um, and they can be a little bit more difficult for our trees and our plants to adapt to. Also, we have really high light conditions and high temperatures. So we need tough trees that can withstand some of these conditions. No wimpy trees allowed. No wimpy trees. Okay. That's very true. So first on your list, your top tree recommendations. You'll have to help me with pronunciation here. The Japanese Zelkova. Japanese Zelkova is a wonderful tree. Very, very tolerant of drought, tolerant of alkaline soils. Um, comes in a different... Um, array of, of sizes, okay. so we can get smaller ones, larger ones, but this beautiful canopy that turns a golden, sometimes orange color in the fall, and just a fantastic addition to our landscapes in Utah. So uh, you said different sizes, but on the larger side in general? Yeah, I mean, you can get some that are massive, and oh. then we have some that are much smaller, well adapted to front yards, um, you know, okay. closer to houses type situations. So Tell us about the Kentucky coffee tree. The Kentucky coffee tree is a very cool tree. So they get these long, um, really interesting leaves on them that um, have multiple leaves on the leaves. They have like little leaflets on the leaves. So oh, when- There's layers of there's fun. There's layers. So <laughs> when it actually sheds the leaves, it sheds like huge hunks of what you would think are the canopy, but it's oh, wow. really just one leaf, but it's these multiple, multiple leaflets on the leaf. So a very lush showing if you're yes. having leaf on leaf. Yes, and um, they do get a little pod. They're usually not prolific but the pods can be of interest as well. So um, very well adapted to Utah climates and soils. It was actually used as a coffee substitute by some of our pioneers. Oh, interesting. okay. So. There's another Japanese tree, a lilac variety you like? Yes, yeah, so if you want a blooming tree, there's a Japanese lilac um, that is a fantastic tree, um, Japanese tree lilac, and um, it blooms white, beautiful in the spring, absolutely wonderful tree to add to your landscape, and much smaller than some of the other trees I've mentioned so mm -hmm. far. So. Great variety. This takes me to my childhood home up Does until the it? age of eight. There were a lot of those. Once I uh -huh. saw the pictures, I was like, oh, yes, 660 East. That's, there were a lot yeah. of trees That's of that them. variety in the area. All right, next on your list, the Big Tooth Maple. So the Big Tooth Maple is native to Utah. So this is a maple. We love our maples in Utah, but they're not generally well adapted right. to this area. So this is a maple that you could bring in um, that is well adapted. It grows in our foothills. It's that red color that we get in the fall in the foothills that we all just want and crave and love. So we'll love it anytime, but especially in the fall in the season. Fall. That's yes, stunning. Absolutely. And finally, the burr oak yeah. made your list of favorites. So the burr oak is an oak that is very, very drought tolerant. So where we're talking about water potentially being an issue, this is a fantastic selection that will give you that oak type leaf mm -hmm. and the acorns and all of those beautiful features without having to take Take a, take a lot of water. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah. shape too. It's fun yeah. to look at the detail up close. When planting trees, you say there are some things to take into consideration. First of all, depth. There are, yes. So depth. So um, I brought a small tree because it's easier for a us baby. To, to manage. Yeah. But um, a lot of the times when you bring your container of your tree home from the nursery, mm -hmm. you'll see that it's planted. And a lot of the times it's planted too deep already in the container. So one thing I like to tell people is when you pull this 
from the container. Pull all of the soil back from the top okay. until you see, and you, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the roots coming off. And this is what's called the trunk flare. So we want to see that crown oh. where it flares out to the trunk. You want to see the roots um, and to starting the roots. to... Yep. And oh, so we okay. want to see just the top of those roots starting to come away. Uh -huh. So um, a lot of the times when you pick up a tree, it can be planted four, six, eight inches too deep in the container, depending on oh, what wow. you're doing. And it will suffocate the tree and it will kill your tree if we don't do this That's right. That's opposite of what I thought you should say. Usually we're saying go a little deeper than you yeah. might think. So with trees, more shallow With wind. trees, a little bit more shallow. Okay. And up. So that's a really important thing to remember. Other things to think about, look at those roots. We uh -huh. don't want to see a lot of circling and girdling roots. If they are circling, if they are girdling, it's really easy to take a pair of landscape scissors. I just learned a new verb, girdling. Girdling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes I feel like I need some girdling, no, but in this I hear case, you, we sister. don't want it. Get rid um, of it. So you can easily cut through those. Free that tree of yep, its Free space. the trees up. Um, yes. You can, you know, loosen up that root ball a little bit. Okay. And then when we plant, if this is a $50 tree, I'm gonna dig a $500 hole. So I'm gonna big, dig a big deep hole. I'm not necessarily gonna amend with a lot. I mean, you can add a little bit of compost, but I wanna loosen up the soil so it's easier for those roots to get down through that soil okay. and establish faster. Okay. Other thing to think about, um, as I, I'm sinking this tree into the soil, I'm thinking about that planting depth. I'm gonna get it right at the right level uh -huh. um, as I go ahead and plant this. And then I'm gonna water it in and I'm gonna water it well. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna check on it often okay. after I water. So, okay. but spring is the perfect time to get this done. So right now, okay. go get your trees. What's a good website to source some of the trees that you've, you've you know, recommended and, and learn more about them, I should so say. So USU has an incredible website where we have um, tree selections for you, treebrowser.org. Oh, good. And over 240 trees for you to look at and choose from trees that are well adapted to Utah. Treebrowser.org, mm -hmm. sounds like a great go-to resource. If we can't have Sheridan right next to us as we're planting a tree, that's the next best thing, but thank you for the the tutorial today. Anything else to add? No, I'll just get this at the right height. Okay, yes, <laughs> and yes. that's it. <laughs> we'll bury it down there. Any classes coming up this um, spring? Yeah, we have a, a huge list of classes. Awesome. So visit the USU Botanical website, um, USU Botanical Center website, and look at our class selection. It's okay. all right there. All right.